I just want to say it really sucks firing a flash over 1500 times. At least I had a chance to catch up on my Netflix queue. I don't know. Okay, so we have the results from our ultimate rechargeable battery real life recycle time testing. And in my hands are the top five batteries that we recommend based on full power to full power recycle time. Before we jump into the results, let me briefly explain the overall testing procedures. Let me start this off by saying I know this isn't a scientific by the numbers testing methodology, and that's never really been what we're about at SR Lounge. All of our reviews and guides, what we care about are real world results, visual results, things that you're gonna see and result in real world situations. A common situation for us is to be using our flashes outdoors in bright sunlight at full power, either as a powerful fill or simply to overpower the sun. So the flash to flash recycle time is extremely important because every second between shots matters. So our goal was to know which of these batteries provided the quickest full power to full power recycle time and nothing else. Now, of course, there are many other features that these batteries can have that are not tested with this type of procedure. For example, how much power a battery can have or retain over time, whether a battery offers thermal protection or not, and much more. This test is simply to see which battery can provide the quickest full power to full power recycle time. Now to test this, we use the Vivitar 285HV, which you see here. Now this isn't exactly a, a flash that I would recommend buying. We've done a review on this, which I don't know if it's posted by this time or yet, but Vivitar has really killed what was once an awesome manual flash with their latest reissue of the 285HV. So you might be wondering, why are we using this flash? Well, because the Vivitar 285HV has a very long full power to full power recycle time, just by itself, basically. This makes it wonderful for this kind of test because the results are more exaggerated and also because it allows the batteries in the flash to stay a little bit cooler because the recycle times are more spread out as opposed to say a modern flash that might be able to do a full recycle within three to four seconds. So the likelihood of actually toasting this flash due to multiple flash power uh, recycles and so forth is kind of much lower. And even if we did manage to basically toast one of these units, it would wouldn't be that big of a deal because they're so inexpensive. They're only 80 bucks. Because each of these flashes is slightly different in terms of the overall circuitry, we used the same flash for all of the batteries and we allowed the flash to completely cool, providing several hours between tests. We purchased each set of batteries completely new. We took them directly from their packaging. We charged them once to full power. And then once charged, we placed them into the flash and proceeded to fire 75 full power shots, measuring the recycle time from flash to flash. Again, this test is unable to measure reliability over time and sustain charge over time, and for this reason, I'd highly recommend sticking to the brand name batteries. This test is also unable to measure whether certain batteries are gonna perform better over longer periods with smaller draws. For example, say firing 1,000 flashes at 130 second power as opposed to firing 100 flashes at full power. That being said, let's go ahead and move on to the results, which I know is what you care about, and I have the batteries here right in my hand. So here are the top five performers. Interestingly enough, one of these batteries was a clear winner, while the other four are actually extremely similar in results. So let's go over the four similar batteries first, starting with number five, and that we have the Any Loop. This is the standard Any Loop, rated at 2000 mAh. Now this battery posted blisteringly fast early recycle time, starting at 6.5 seconds and then falling to 11.3 seconds by the 75th shot. Total time to fire all 75 shots on this battery was a blazing fast 723 seconds. Now in fourth place, right after that, we have the PowerX, and this is rated at 2700 mAh. Early recycle times were actually among the slowest of the five batteries, but it ran the race slightly better over time. It yielded a final shot time for the 75 shots of 715 seconds, but we were a little bit disappointed in the results, particularly with this battery, because we'd heard a lot about it. We thought it would place a little bit better than fourth place among our testing group, uh, just because of the hype, and also it has a very high MAH rating. It would do a bit better. It's, I mean, at least it's safe to say it would do better beyond 75 flashes because it does have a little bit more, uh, a little bit more, what is it, capacity. All right, so it would hold up probably a little bit better than the other ones, but overall, we only saw a 1% difference in the final time compared to the Any Loop. Now, next in third place, we have the Duracell Stay Charge, which I have here. The Duracell Stay Charge is rated at 2000 mAh, and in second place, we have the Sony Rechargeable. Now, I grouped these two kind of together because these two batteries posted almost identical final scores, with the Sony edging out the Duracell with basically 707 seconds, as opposed to the Duracell being 708 seconds. Essentially, they are identical. Again, this is only a 1% difference when compared to the PowerX. So, 1% better than the PowerX, maybe 2% better than the Anyloop, but that's it. A 1 
to 2% difference between these top four performers. And that's why all four of these are really great choices overall. Now in first place though, we have the AnyLoop XX. This is rated at 2500 mAh and the battery performed two to 3% quicker than our second and third place batteries with a final time of 692 seconds. This means it's around 5% faster than the AnyLoop and around 3% faster than the, uh, the Sony's and well, whatever the second place ones were. All right, so this was the only battery that I would say is a clear winner as all the other batteries posted very similar times with such small variations that they're kind of negligible. But of course, the modest three to 5% performance boost does come at a hefty premium. So you're gonna have to decide if it's worth it. In general, it's worth noting that among the top five batteries, we saw batteries with a higher MAH rating generally performing better towards the 75th flash, indicating of course, their better overall capacity as we'd expect. But once again, the AnyLoop XX was the only battery at the 75th flash that was still posting times under 11 seconds. So this is definitely our winner. Now we had 14 different rechargeable batteries in this testing group. So to see all the details, the graphs, the results and everything, as well as links to where you can buy each of these products, be sure to check out the actual article. You can find that by clicking on the link below in the description. My name is Pi and I'll see you all in the next video.